In my last Raspberry Pi video, I talked about setting up the Pi for headless use, but some people said that they were confused by this and thought I meant that it was a headless setup for the Pi. The method I talked about still required you to have a keyboard and a monitor. Some people even pointed out that there is an alternative way to do this. So in this video, we're going to look at a true headless setup where you don't need a keyboard or monitor for your Pi at all. All you need is a micro SD card reader, a micro SD, and the Pi. And if it's an older Pi like this one, you'll need a Wi-Fi adapter too. The first thing we'll want to do is download the software that we'll need. All the links will be in the description below. We want to grab the latest version of Raspbian Lite. We want to grab Etcher. We also want to grab Putty so we can SSH into it when we're finished. And finally, we're going to use Angry IP Scanner to find the IP address of the Pi after we're finished setting it up. There's other ways of doing it, but this way should be the most straightforward. Next, you want to launch Etcher and select the Raspbian Lite.zip that we just downloaded. Then you want to change the drive to be the memory card that you want to flash the image for the Pi to, and then click the flash button. While we're waiting for the Etcher flash to finish, launch the Angry IP Scanner. When you get in here, click the little cog, go to Display, and change Display in Results List to just be a live host, and click OK. Next, you want to change this here, Fetchers and we want to add in MAC address and MAC vendor and click OK. And now we want to click start to scan. When it's finished scanning, take note of how many hosts alive that there are. Then go to scan, go to export all, navigate to my documents and save it as export or anything you want. This saves a list of all the devices on your network and their IP addresses, so after we plug in the Pi, we can compare against this list and see what's new, and that's our Pi. When Etcher is finished flashing the drive, plug out the micro USB card and then plug it back in again, and you should be presented with a boot drive. Click into it. Inside this folder, we want to create two files. The first one we want to create is just SSH with no file ending. This tells the Pi to enable the SSH server on startup. The second file we want to create is the one that has the Wi-Fi details in it. So this file is called wpa underscore supplicant.conf. To rename these files correctly, you might need to enable hidden file extensions on Windows. I'll leave a link in the description for doing this. The SSH file we want to leave blank, it doesn't need anything in it, but we need to populate the WPA supplicant.conf. So right click on it and click open with and open it with notepad. I'll leave an example in the description below so you can paste that in and modify it as you need. So the country code, again, I'll leave a link to a list of examples, but they're pretty straightforward. They're probably what you expect they are. So change that to whatever your country is and then in network, update your SSID to be the name of your network and this PSK value to be the password for your network and save that. We're now ready to power up the Pi. So take out the SD card and plug it into your Pi. If you need to, plug in your Wi-Fi adapter. And then plug in the power to your Pi. The first time you start up a Pi with a fresh memory card in it, it takes a little bit longer to boot up, but after a couple of minutes you'll see this power light turn solid green. Do another scan in Angry IP Scanner and compare against the text file we created earlier. Although in this case it's very obvious which one is the Pi because the host name is raspberrypi.local, but when testing this earlier it didn't show up there, so you might still need to compare. Launch Putty and type in the IP address of your Pi. Log into the Pi with the username Pi, and the default password is Raspberry. The first thing we want to do is change the password. It even prompts you on screen to do it. It's definitely a huge security risk to leave the default one, so you definitely want to change it. So to change it, just type passwd, type in the current password, which is Raspberry, and then type in your new password. The last thing that would be useful to do is make your Pi's IP address persistent. There's two ways you can go about this. 
One is to make the Raspberry Pi have a static IP address. This wouldn't be my preferred way of doing it. One of the reasons for this is because it's completely tied to your Pi's software setup. So if you upgrade Raspbian to another image, you'll lose the IP address. The other reason is that you need to be very careful to not cause IP address conflicts with other devices on your network. I will link to a guide though if you want to do it this way. My preferred method of doing it is a sticky DHCP address on your router. So basically anytime the Pi asks for an IP address off your router, the router sees the MAC address and gives it the same one every time. The issue with this method is I can't really show you how to do it because it's going to be completely dependent on the router that you have at home. It's probably under a setting called DHCP server and you want to make it reserved or static, something along those lines. And that's it, your Pi is set up for headless use without the need of a keyboard or mouse even in the setup process. I'd like to thank everyone in the comments of the other video that pointed this process out to me. To be honest, I wasn't familiar with it at all. I'm pretty new to Raspberry Pi stuff, so if you have any more suggestions on things, I'm more than happy to learn. But as always, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to try help in the comments, and uh, thanks a lot.